So what happened yesterday that allows you to integrate with SharePoint? That's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon and today's Thursday, which means we're gonna do our information roundup like we do every Thursday here on Guy in the Cube. And we had some exciting news come out this last week, so let's go and dive right in. First on the list is the general availability for the Power BI Gateway for Enterprise. This has been in preview for a month or two. As part of GA, let's highlight some of the features that are there. You can do live connections to SQL Server analysis services, both multi-dimensional and tabular, as well as SAP HANA. Also with the GA, we've allowed the ability to use security groups for user access and for administrators. And also, if you're using the AS connector for Power BI, now is the time to look at upgrading to the Enterprise Gateway and moving over to that. This blog post talks about those items as well as there's additional documentation that you can go look at that'll walk you through how to do this. Next on the list is an update for Power BI Desktop. This came out last Thursday. There were a bunch of different items that were part of this update, but just to highlight a few, you can actually create measures now with Direct Query. So before when you were using Direct Query, it wouldn't allow you to actually create a measure, and now you can do that. I know this was one of the big blockers for people using Direct Query, so it's great to see this feature is now in place in desktop. Also, there were improvements to hierarchies, as well as improvements to the R integration. So there were a lot more than that, so be sure to go check out the blog post and find out what's new in Power BI Desktop and upgrade to the latest version. Next on the list is a blog post by Chris Webb from Across the Pond, and he talks about how to actually analyze DMVs from Power BI Desktop. So if you weren't aware, Power BI Desktop actually has a child process of analysis services, and you can actually connect to that. And as part of that, there are DMVs available through analysis services that you could actually query and use. So if you are hitting some issues within Power BI Desktop that you think may be performance related or you wanna go get some additional uh, information, then go check out this blog post and he walks you through how you can actually connect to it and analyze those data and run the queries for DMVs against that AS instance. Next on the list are the updates for CTP 3.3 for SQL Server 2016, reporting services and analysis services. So on the reporting services side, favorites have been enabled. So if you want to favorite a KPI or mobile report, you can go ahead and do that. Also, the ability to create and manage data sources, shared data sources, are now available through the new web portal. Before you had to go switch back to the old report manager to do that, it's now available in the web portal. On the analysis services side, lots of great stuff there, including the ability to add a calculated column to a direct query model. Also the ability to apply row level security to a direct query model, and also a neat new improvement, the ability to add translations to a tabular model. So go and check out these blog posts to find out more details of those items and how you can use those. Last on my list for today is a new ability in Power BI called Publish to Web. And this is used for given reports that you've created, and when you publish to web, you'll get a URL and an embed code. And what this does is actually allow you to have public access to that report. So you don't have to log in to get that data. Now, where this gets really cool is the embed piece. I can actually take that embed code, which is like an iframe, and stick that into my SharePoint site, I can stick it into my web page. I can stick it into my blog, and I can pretty much put a Power BI report anywhere. That's pretty awesome. A lot of people are excited about this, so be sure to check out this blog post. There's an associated video that walks you through how to do it, and just be very careful about what you share and make sure that you don't have any confidential information that is not allowed to go out publicly. So do you have any questions about any of the items that I talked about? Do you have any items that you thought were interesting that I didn't mention? I'd love to hear that. Leave that in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. And also take a look at the comments and see what other people are saying. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Thursday I do an information roundup just like this, where I take a look at the last week, find things that were interesting and share that out with you. Every Tuesday I take a look at a technical item where I either look at a new feature, how something works or how to troubleshoot something. And really this is about you. I wanna help you be more effective and successful in the things that you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.